Again, thank you all for being here. It's great to see so many good friends of the center with us here and to join us for the Liars Bench reunion. Um, I expect most of you know this year. I believe the Liars Bench got rolling during the summer of 2010. Don't you think, Gary, it was 2010? And um, they started, the first shows were in the back room at City Lights Bookstore. Back. And yes, yes, back room. Back room. <laughs> and indeed, um, they, it became quite crowded um, quickly. And so we were delighted the following year to persuade Gary to bring the Liars Bench over here at the Mountain Heritage Center. And we're proud that he's considered as his home for the past four years. So, um, as you know, we've been, the Liars Bench has been dormant a little bit the past year, but we have had so many good times in this auditorium, and um, we have really had such a, a great um, spirit of community, I think. Um, many things have come together around here. Uh, at the Mountain Heritage Center, and this is a place where the university and the community genuinely meet. And uh, actually, the university and the community meet in the person of Gary Carden himself. Um, this is a gentleman who certainly is a Silva native, but who is also has undergraduate, graduate, and graduate earned degrees here and an honorary PhD. So um, I think Gary, in a lot of ways, embodies that union of community and, and university that we have here. But um, you all didn't come to listen to me talk. Um, I would like to get the Liars Bench rolling. Gary, would you take it away? Welcome the Liars Bench. <laughs> Ray Shing more than it's on. Then. It's on. <laughs> it's on. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Folks, I'm Gary Carton. You probably know that, but it's been a while since I've been up here. I understand I was on the radio this morning. I didn't know that until somebody told me. Did you? <clears throat> I, I'm a little worried about it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember being on the radio this morning. <laughs> But they assure me I was, and that I told stories about my neighbors. <laughs> so that, that's not good. Okay, uh, first off, let me ask you, Dave, you said something about being filmed in here? Yes. Tell uh, me what's going on. We've got Auburn Friedman back here who is filming the show, The Liar's Base, today, and I'll work with Pam and see if we can make those available to people who want to buy them. Harvard does an outstanding job of give, telling you who, what, when, and where, and all that good stuff. It does a real nice label, so you'll want a copy of this film when we get it done. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see who we've got here. This is new to me. Who is this fellow? I might have been the one on the radio. <laughs> Who brought you? I, I, I brought my own self. I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I'm in the wheel of the day. Okay. He's one of Paul's new. David. David Bruin, I guess I'll already know him. And uh, William Redder, first time I saw William Redder, he was with David Bruin, I think, up here. Mountain Heritage Center, and this guy is a celebrity. He he got plays with the Sweet Tater Band. Is it still? No, it's defunct. <laughs> it is defunct. <laughs> I don't feel too good about that. Okay. <laughs> and Dave, what have you been doing? Well, loafing. And Huh? Get ready to come to this show today. Get ready. Okay, you got four months to get ready. If, we all get <laughs> if I ask you, uh, I may not. <laughs> but if I should ask you, you, you know, would you do kudzu? I'll do that. Or, uh, yeah, I'll do kudzu. If you I'll do, do, do kudzu. Okay, okay, I'll do kudzu. Numerous demands for kudzu. I'll do kudzu. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, matter of fact, 
Maybe we ought to get started with that. Why don't you do kudzu to kick the show off? Huh? I go first? Yeah, you're going to go first. Are you in he, He's uh, going to go second. <laughs> what are you doing today? Uh, bury me beneath the willow. Bury me beneath the willow. Okay. All right, they Check, check. <laughs> All right, I've been asked to do kudzu. It goes like this. I wish I'd have brought my guitar on the way. You want to use mine? But I can't play it, so it's just, just as well that I did. Kudzu. Kudzu grows on road banks and upon power poles. I don't know who brought it here, but God rest her soul. Brought it here to keep the blessed soil from washing away. How could they know that kudzu grow at least a foot a day? There's miles and miles of kudzu down in Dixie Land. It grows well in water and on any kind of land. Now it's starting to grow up north, at least that's what they say. So the folks up there can sit and watch it grow a foot a day. Kudzu grows a foot a day if it grows at all. It can climb the highest tree up or through a wall. Don't sit too close to it when you've got nothing to do. Cause if you sit there for too long, cuts will cover you. <laughs> you've heard of Jack's bass talk, I don't think that's true. Instead of a bass talk, Jack set out Kudzu. Set it out at supper time and then to sleep he lay. It grown up to the sky by the break of day. Cause kudzu grows a foot a day if it grows at all. It can climb the highest tree up or through a wall. Don't sit too close to it when you've got nothing to do. Cause if you sit there for too long, kudzu will cover you. Right. <laughs> you been warned.
So she sat backwards and we had to interview the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> She's a nice lady. And so I said to her, now y'all, don't pay any attention to me if I color things a little bit. Uh, she was an interesting lady. I said, uh, you know, those 19 guys that drowned, uh, that happened right here. She said, yes, it did. It did, yes. And I said, uh, and they're buried up there on top of that tunnel. She says, no, they're not buried up there. I said, what do you mean they're not buried up there? She said, well, I ought to knock them. They're buried behind my house. <laughs> I said, what? Why, if they're buried behind your house, uh, how did this happen? She says, honey, I wasn't even born when this happened. This happened 132 years ago. But my daddy told me they brought them boys right through this yard and took them right up there on that hill and buried them. And I said, buried them where? She said, well, we'll show you. They're up there in three chances. And now I'm not drag it out. Uh, with a great deal of trouble, we went up there and cut a lot of brush away and we found the three trenches. There they were. And I went back and I said, uh, how come you never told me about it? She said, nobody asked. <laughs> it was that simple. And I wonder how many other things are that way. Nobody asked. <laughs> well, we decided to push it a little further. You know, did we know they were in there? Well, no. But we got a, a dowser. What was his name? Joe Holt. Joel. Joe Holt. Okay. And if you don't no, know, no. they find Tom water. Stewart. Tom 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 Stewart. I didn't think I sounded right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was Just get rid of the right thing. <laughs> Tom Stewart. And Bowser's find water. That's what we're accustomed to. You know. They found water for my granddaddy. You know. Um, so we got a Bowser. He went up there with a very fancy outfit that looked like a fishing rod, you know. And he walked around and he, doom, 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 but he said, There are 19 bodies here. And he even broke them up, you know, like there's six there and seven there and so many. Okay, what was the next step? I thought it was to get forensic medicine uh, people, forensics people in the Western. To verify what he said, he said, and he verified that they were there, that there were a lot of metal with them, which was possibly the shackles and chains they were buried with, which opens up a whole new thing that remind me if I forget. But about that time, we had to shut all our big plans down. I think at one time we thought we would take the remains of 19 dead men out of that very old spot. And of course, they wanted to take them home. <laughs> that turned out to be a little illogical because, and I'm leaving out something. I lucked up. I got on the computer and I contacted a railroad historian in Raleigh and I told him the whole thing and he went over to the prison camp and found a little dusty file and pulled it out and told me the, nine, the names of the 19 men that were buried in that site. He also told me that the youngest one was 15, that the oldest one was 28, that they were all in there for minor crimes. They had done things like walk on the highway after dark. That was a crime at one time. That's when they needed prisoners badly. <laughs> Why did they need prisoners badly? Well, it's because the prison camp rented prisoners to the railroad, cheap labor, what some people call slavery by a different name. And so all those, that opens up, we're talking about 19 guys that drowned in the Tuckasee River. Now back it up. Those convicts built that railroad all the way from the coast of North Carolina all the way to Murphy. And a lot
bottom nine. At least 7,000 of them. About 200 of them died in Swanamoa. Uh, that was a bad place to be, and that's where these 19 men were before they got here. Before they got to the Cali Tunnel, they were in Swanamoa, and that was bad country, and bad things happened to them, and they died like flies, but the survivors came on, and then they come all the way over here and drowned in the Texas. Of course, that's what happened. I'll summarize it in that they drowned because they had on shackles and chains. If they hadn't had those shackles and chains on, they would not have drowned. They went right to the bottom of the river. That explains their death, you know. Well, why did they have shackles and chains? Well, they were dangerous men. But the word sort of spread from the implication was they were killers. You know, it's been a terrible crime. Not a one of them. Of the 19, not a single one committed a serious crime. We know for a fact that the, everything they did, the, the, the highest serious crime that, that they could give, anything that any of them did was, well, what was it they call it? Not a felony. It was a, a simple crime. This is what you normally get uh, at the most uh, three months in prison for. But suddenly the prisons in uh, North Carolina, particularly in uh, the middle section of North Carolina, were packed. They had lots of prisoners. And of course that had to have been planned. And they were being fed into the railroad. And they were building the railroad um, to Murphy. We never finished this project, and uh, I am tempted to write a play about it. And so far, I failed. I'm still working on it, but I've still got a play. It has 52 pages now. I don't know. That might be something. I'm not in good health, and I'm kind of worthless. You know. <laughs> Get up some morning, eat breakfast, and go back to bed. <laughs> that, that, that kind of thing. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe we might eventually finish that play. I'm simplifying. A lot of things have happened. One of my major considerations was that I didn't have black actors. You know, Western North Carolina is not exactly replete. With black actors. Well, I don't have that for an excuse anymore because I now have a friend named Phoebe Hall who teaches at a black university in Fayetteville and she teaches theater. And she said she'd be glad to give me 19 black actors. She said she'd give me 100 if I needed them. And maybe it'll go on. People keep writing me, people calling me. There's reasons we can't go on. Dave, why didn't we go in and dig these guys up and take them home? Well, we ran into a legal problem with the people who own the land don't want people intruding on their property. It's not an official cemetery. It's just that these people are buried there. But these people own the property. And... Uh, we got to the point we couldn't go any farther because of that legal hang-up. Can't progress any further. Some people, have, uh, I've got lots of people that give me advice. Frequent advice I got was, Gary, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> forget it. Go, I go on and do something else for heaven's sake, making yourself miserable over this. Go on. Forget it. You know, so. <laughs> But I'm stalled. Those 19 guys are out on what I, what's the name of the guy? I named the ridge what? What's the name of the ridge? Wilkie. It's, it's on, That's it's, not the it's on Wilkie ridge. property. Yeah. But the man that owns the property is named Wilkie and he's the one that says, you're not removing these bodies from the, this land because I'm the overseer. But, uh, 
Sometimes I think about that grave tide. It's about the size of this. There's a carpet here, you know, 19 men in there. And I think about a scene in the play where we go up there with reinforcements. <laughs> Let's take uh, the members of a African American church and let's go up there and let's take a fiery African American minister and let's pray at that time. Let him kneel there with the choir and ask those 19 men. I guess he could quote the Bible, you know, the Old Testament, and these bones live. Could they speak? What would they say? And at this point, maybe they do. Maybe he conjures them up right there on the spot. But then, you know, uh, probably not. Anyway, I thought you needed to know where I was and where it stalled, and uh, it may eventually go on. I don't know. I hope so. There are people that are interested in it. Uh, I'll keep you informed. Either that or I'll move to another state and change my name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> okay, what are you going to do for me now? You got one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, my home's across the Blue Ridge Mountain. Aw, uh, I should have. Okay. <laughs>
thinking about, Larry? I was thinking about, uh, you know, there's a song that people um, sing a lot uh, in bluegrass in the old time um, called uh, Lonesome Road Blues, going down the road feeling bad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, people sing it as a real upbeat, fun song, but there's, uh, I don't, I don't think they really know what they're singing about, for one thing. And there's, um, uh, so, sorry, wrong song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. A worried man. Um, but uh, there's actually a line in there that says, um, went across the river and lay me down to sleep. When I look up, there's shackles on my feet. And I'm pretty sure that's about sundown laws, um, about people being thrown in you know, in jail, essentially for nothing, so they can end up on a chain gang and build tunnels for us, or, mm -hmm. or lay down railroad tracks, um, or work in the mines. Um, so I uh, just have kind of a there's a there's a lot of you know a lot of uh, legacies in uh, our folklore. Um, sometimes things that I don't think we realize are there, like like that line, for example. Yeah. Most people sing that song, they don't sound like they're worried at all. <laughs> it sounds like having a ball. It makes a worried man sing a worried song. <laughs> well, you know, Paul did a song, uh, Slum Rock Song. And it's got some weird lines in it that don't make any sense. You don't know what they're a reference to. And uh, one of them is uh, something to the effect that. Uh, I'm not carrying this hammer anymore. I'm going to take this hammer. I'm not carrying it anymore. And there is a story in the Swarnoy Tunnel that two men actually, they were worked sometimes in the tunnel until they collapsed from exhaustion. And there was two guys that were working in poisoned air. You know, the air in the tunnel was poisoned. And, uh, I think the story claims that they were brothers, but they just talked it over. And they decided, the hell with this. And so when they put them in the tunnel the next day, they turned around and dropped the tunnel, dropped their hammers, and walked. And when they walked, the guard shot them both. And that's what the line was a reference to. You know, it's all these things you don't know, they're just fragments. Hanging there. You got another song, we'll Uh, another one. Which one do you have? Huh? Where you have? You got your own version of it? No. <laughs> we can do like, uh, John Henry or something. Oh, that's good. I'll take that. Okay. Well, I'll kind of like do it and see what you do. Thank you. 
man could not work. Ali drove steel like a man.
sent my book to the publisher, and he sent it back. <laughs> it's amazing. It, uh, I don't see, he, he didn't have time to look at it even. But he sent it back. He says, be serious here. Everybody's interested in this. Well, a few years ago, I ran into a little woman who offered to draw each one of them. I had 48. And she thought we could make a book of it. Uh, and we did, and it was published a couple of years ago. I'm just going to give you a few. I'm not going to put you to sleep. You don't have to sneak off. And, buy, and besides, I'm standing out here. I can see. <laughs> okay. Uh, give you my favorites, kind of. Uh, uh, Kluber. Oh no, that's a joint. I, 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 I did the snake ones for you here. You said you wanted snakes and snipes, so I've got the snakes and snipes here. Okay, I wanted those and a clooper. <laughs> okay, I can go with that. Okay, here's a mount snake. A mount snake mount scout. And they uh, sort of travel it. You don't fool me. <laughs> They don't have any teeth. And cows kind of like them. You, you can tell that cow is sort of entranced. <laughs> well, it beats uh, the farmer's old cold fingers, you know. So uh, they even had trouble. Uh, milk snakes are traveling herds up to 100. And they're goofy looking. They don't have any teeth. And they hide out in the woods. And they prey on dairy farms, you know, where somebody's got, good heavens, uh, 300 cows. And they can come in there and milk every cow you got, you know, <laughs> overnight. And uh, there is a story, isn't it, a guy he actually hired guys to set out on the fence with shotguns <laughs> so that the, the milk snakes couldn't come and milk his cows. But one night, they were college boys, and uh, one night they got a case of beer, and they drank beer, and the next thing you knew, they all went to sleep, and uh, when they went to sleep, way up on the hill, the milk snakes is here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And here they come, just as hard as they could. And they hit this guy, uh, Barry, it had 400 cows in it. They milked every one of them. And some of them got bloated. They had grown so much milk them that they couldn't crawl away. And the next morning when the farmer came, they were laying all over the pasture. It looked like they had truck tires laying around that. They're all bloated because they've drunk so much milk, you know. And he fired the college kids except for two. And uh, he made the two, the remaining, <laughs> help him drag all of those bloated milk snakes into the barn. And he tied a rope around the milk snakes' tails and took it up into the rafters and pulled them up into the rafters and tied the rope, you know. And then these college kids would get on the ladder and go up there and jump on the snake and slide. <laughs> and so they melt the snakes, you know. The guy got and it, it worked so well, uh, he quit using the mounting machine. He just uh, melt the snakes. And, uh, that's Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay, well, that's a snack. These snacks are black with a white spot. Some people claim they're white with a black spot. Uh, I was in the Boy Scouts when I was taking on the snack run. My so-called friends who were in the Boy Scouts took me up in the woods late at night and gave me a toe sack and they told me that you had to whistle to get a sign, you know. And I, I, I could whistle, and I had teeth, you know. <laughs> and I had a lantern, and uh, they lit the lantern and gave it to me. And they said, "Now, Gary, hold the lantern behind the sack and hold the sack open and whistle, and they will come and jump in the sack." And I stayed there about three hours before I realized there was nobody up there but me. <laughs> and I went back down the hill and they were all snickering. <laughs> I'm 
understand that they do that to the Boy Scouts all over the United States. You know, that's <laughs> Red blooded things that you learn as a Boy Scout. Mm -hmm. a snack, right? Well, there are the snaps. I upgraded there. That, that kid had a, an electric light in it. Okay, that's an Arkansas snack. Uh, Arkansas snacks really, uh, well, they're mosquitoes, but they're as big as a jet plane. You know, and they kill cattle. And uh, their favorite thing to do is kill uh, horses, and then they play horseshoes with the horseshoes on the horse, you know, for who gets the saddle. And uh, that, that's very common in the West. And they're all very exaggerated and unbelievable. I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> okay. Show me another one. I don't believe. Oh, well. That is a good one. That is a good one. I do like that one. That's a slide rock boulder. A slide rock boulders eat tourists. <laughs> they hung out in the Smokies. You know. When the first tourists came to the Smokies, slide rock boulders would get them. Slide rock boulder, what you bait a trap with, see that's the that's bait down there, is you dress a dummy in mattress shorts and put a camera around its neck and set it out in the woods and a, a slide rock boulder will come. They uh, exude grease out of their mouth and then they slide on the race and they can get up to 250 miles an hour. And they'll come off of a mountain like that, you know. And when they get a tourist, they just leave the shoes. There's nothing else there. And slide up the book, you know. But of course, when they started trying to kill them all, uh, with dummies, dynamite, and so forth, they never killed a slide rock culture. They irritated a lot, you know. But uh, they didn't kill any. But they vanished. Nobody's seen one in years except I heard last year there was one over at Dollywood. <laughs> uh, oh, a Philly Lou Crane. Uh, they're kind of sweet. This is a little bird. He's tiny and he's blue. And when he flies, you can't see him. And he, he lays eggs that float away. You know? And the only time you ever see one is when it's dead. Pick them up in the woods. Tennessee Williams has a reference to uh, the, word, the bird that sleeps on the wind. This one calls it something. It's in the fugitive kind. Y'all go on and look it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Billy Lou Crane. I can go back. I've got some of the snakes. Would you like the hook snake? Well, see if you can find me a, a hoop snake or I'll sell for a bluebird. <laughs> I, I didn't get I really one. like bluebirds. I'm sorry, Gary, but, but yeah, that was not the slideshow you talked you talked to me about. <laughs> Oops. Why don't you just paint a picture with words for us, Gary? Yeah. There's your, there's your Well, I'll sell for that. There's your snake. <laughs> well, I've never heard of hoop snakes, haven't you? No? One, two. For heaven's sake. Well, obviously it's a snake that can take its tail in its mouth and roll down a hill. You it has a barb on its tail, and it's deadly poison. And the way it gets you is it rolls down a hill, and when it's going real fast, it goes zoom like an arrow. And it flies through the air backwards with that poison barb in front. And if it gets you with that barb, you're dead. But mountain boys, like me, when we were growing up and you were out hoeing corn, learned to dodge it. And so you still find it. And it sticks in a tree. And if it sticks in, say, an old tree, that tree's dead in three hours. All the leaves fall off of it. And I heard a story once about a hoop sneak that stuck in a tree. And this guy stepped aside and it hit the tree and the tree uh, leaves died. And then the tree started swelling. 
And he got bigger and bigger and bigger, and the guy saw it was getting humongous. And so he went home and got a big crossfit sow and got his friends, and they came back. And when they got back, it was humongous. It took them all day to saw that tree down. You stuck this, you know. Boy, this is <laughs> So they saw the tree down, and they got enough lumber out of that tree that he went home and he built a house and a barn and a chicken house. <laughs> and his wife was real pleased. Except she wanted to get painted. And so he went to town and bought 20 gallons of red paint. And he came back and he painted everything. And that was unfortunate because, you see, the paint took the poison out of the lumber. And when he did that, Tree, all that lumber started shrinking. And they just barely got out of the house in time and ran and got the cow. Chickens didn't I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. It looks like I'm trying your patience. But anyway, I got a, a, a whole book of those. You know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't buy it. It's out there on the list. There's one more here. Uh, oh, that's the whip snake. Yeah, that, it, it just got little kids. It got kids that laid out of school. See, this kid, instead of going to school, he's gone fishing. And the whip snake got him. See? And what the whip snake would do is it would bite you right here in what is called your septum. Right there. That part of your nose. And then it would put two twists around your neck. And then it would just whip the hell out of you. <laughs> you know, there were some deadly ones in South Carolina that would whip you till you were dead. But these just usually whipped you till you whimpered. <coughs> so, you know, you go back to school. You see that, right? See the kids look? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I quit before anybody? <laughs>
put a picnic table up there and a little marker and let the world alone. You know, maybe some tourists will go up there to find the marker. I doubt that they would. But anyway, that's what they say. Is that the best we can do? Do they deserve better? Yes. That's a good question. You know, are there 19 restless souls? Are there, is there, if, whether you believe that or not, is there something unpleasant about this that no acknowledgement was ever made about these fellows buried up there? Uh, and as far as I know, it never will be, unless somebody raises a lot of hell. That's sort of where it, it is, you know. I'll tell you an interesting thing. Um, I have a, a strange guy who comes to see me time, sometimes late at night. I wish he wouldn't do that, you know. 10 or 11 o'clock. And my dog starts barking, and I go to the door, and here stands this guy. He's a teacher from Macon County. <laughs> Bill, you know him because he's come to your house. You know what I'm talking about? Him. <laughs> okay, he came that night. He beat on the door, and he beat on the door, and I was watching reruns of Corona uh, Blood, and I didn't want to get up and go to the door because. It was uh, the Red Wedding, and you have to be addicted to the normal blood, you know what the Red Wedding is. Well, he didn't quit beating, and so I finally went to the door, and opened the door, and there he stood. Well, that's just the way things are. I sleep most of the time. I just got out of the bed. Uh, I have vertigo. I opened the door, and when I opened the door, there he stood, and uh, then just as he uh, looked in the door, my pants fell off. <laughs> and then I fell down. <laughs> and then he says, Oh, I'm sorry about you, Gary, and he's gone down the wall. <laughs> I reckon he thought I was some sort of degenerate. <laughs> he had behind me at the door for hours waiting for a chance. <laughs> but anyway, he came in and, and he gave me a Mountain Express, you know, this newspaper. And he had circled his article in it. And he gave me the article. This is in this issue, this week's issue of Mountain Express. <coughs> Check me on this. And what it is, is an article protesting the fact that there are no memorials, there are no uh, markers, there is nothing that pays tribute to the African Americans who built the railroad through Western North Carolina. And something should be done about this. And there's an organization in Franklin that is threatening to, I mean in Asheville, that is threatening to do something about it. I don't know. I went back to bed. <laughs> I did remember it, though. I'm still thinking about it. Question. I want to ask a general question of the bigger maybe. Um, first of all, I thank you for what you've done um, with you. history and, and bringing it to stage. And even just folklore, you're know, talking about the animals that are based on the stories and legends. Um, as you know, I'm in Georgia now, and I'm you know, working on the oral history project in my community that you know, tries to um, acknowledge all parts of our community as a shared history. So it's not like the separate little back chapter on the black people or, you know, just the rich white people in town or whatever it may be. Yeah. And I'm just going to throw this general question out. How do you think we, we're doing sharing the past, you know, good, bad, ugly, and otherwise, with young people today. I mean, we have one young person in the audience here today. Um, most of us have gray hair, even me, in the audience. I mean, how, how can we do a better job at that? 
how do you think we're doing Okay, I guess we need to hush and leave, don't we? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Quickly, and, and you can always continue the conversation. You can always continue the conversation out in the lobby too. Okay. Are you optimistic? Hmm? Are you optimistic? You're an optimist. No, are you? Are you? Are you? I'm trying. Sure. About the history. He can't hear. Yeah. Can't hear. Yeah. I don't think he heard you. No, he didn't. Uh, there are interesting things happening. Mm -hmm. um, just one example. Uh, our new dean sent me an email message and said he wanted to talk to me about it. Does that bode good, or does he just want to renew his grid subscription? <laughs> 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 well, we'll see. I, I won't have concluded in some meaningful way that I would like to have my parking ticket validated. I would like to have some indication that what that we're better people than the way it looks at present. You know. uh, it really bothers me that this can be swept under the rug until it can be taken as a cause by somebody with more resources than I got and, uh, and more persistence than I have. Yeah. I don't know. I'm optimistic, yes. Let's wait and see what happens. <laughs> uh, there are people who are interested in paying a proper tribute to those 19 men. You know. The thing I run into, I think it's a reaction to Dave's determination to try to take them home. It was the realization that they can't go home because there is no home. They were part of a labor force that was in constant motion. And within 10 years of their death, their parents were moved to another county. Their children were gone. Within 20 years, nobody remembered their names. Nobody knows where they are. And here they are, you know, uh, alone up here on this, uh, this mountaintop. And if that is the case, maybe the issue is, this is what I'm trying to convince myself, if you've been dead 132 years, this is your home. This is it. This earth, that river, this county, this is your home. And you might, I guess I'm saying that the dead need to accept the fact that they're here to stay. They're part of our environment. Not a one of them is Jackson County. They're all from down east, you know. Question. How about a little music to end this portion of the program? <coughs> One more number? Wait.
Thank you, Liars Bench. It's wonderful to have you.